Get ready to dive into a world where empires stand on the brink of war and terrible monsters tear at the fragile borderlands of men. The Adventurer Conqueror King System Imperial Imprint, or as we like to call it, Axe 2, is now live on Kickstarter. Axe 2 is the new edition of the acclaimed best-selling fantasy role-playing game. You'll find everything you need to enjoy epic fantasy campaigns with a sweeping scope. Whether you want to crawl through dungeons, experiment with alchemy, crossbreed monsters, run a merchant emporium, raise an undead legion, or even conquer an empire, Axe 2 supports your playstyle. Axe 2 integrates experience point mechanics, making campaign activities a seamless part of the core gameplay loop. Your character levels up in new and exciting ways each time you play, adding massive replayability to each of your adventures. Axe 2 offers 18 character classes, 378 spells, new combat mechanics, and so much more. Support Axe 2 on Kickstarter today. And welcome to Knocked Prone, a podcast of high crits, small fits, and varying wits. My name is Cade, and I'm joined here by my lovely birthday girl wife. Brooklyn playing Litzy. <laughs> Jameson playing Jack. Danny playing Yui. Caden playing Torin. And Mason playing with Kier. Awesome! <laughs> All right, well, happy birthday, Litzy. Um, as you reach into your pocket, you find a vial of luck. You guys took a long rest last session as you ended after Katya came and talked to you about Torin's father, Cord, being locked up in the frozen fortress. But, Litzy, as you fall asleep, the clock strikes midnight. A glow happens over your body as you grow from a small creature to a medium creature. Your facial features get a lot more grotesque. Your nails grow. Your hair becomes long and greased. And you become a crimson hag. So, do I wake up to this, or is this just totally in my sleep? Uh, This happened in your sleep, but you will wake up. uh, I mean, if you'd like to wake up during it, you're totally allowed to do that. It's the Princess Fiona from Shrek moment that's happening right Right. now. I guess I'm just wondering if anybody's um, standing guard. I would be. I was about to say, (laughs) I would maybe notice this happening because I would be keeping watch for the first four hours reading the autobiographies. I mean, it was hard to sleep through the. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But yes, you turn into this hag, your body engulfs in flame, and then it subsides into this ashen form that you you are now reborn into this crimson hag form that Mama Sherry told you about, the hags told you about in the summer court, and happy birthday. I look down on my hands and... um, They're massive compared to gnomish hands. Yeah, I, I take in their grotesque form and just stare at myself for a little bit and then I realize that Lakir's awake and probably notices and I just look up and just stare him right in the face for like five seconds. Yeah, Lakir's already staring at you and it's just, <laughs> how'd you sleep? <laughs> I think I have a lot of sleeping left, but how do you like my new look? It's something for sure. Um, how do you feel? A little different, but I feel like I'm just waking up. I'm not sure if I can really put my finger on it. I really want to be rested for tomorrow. I think it's going to be a big day. I think definitely, yes. Do you think this will scare the others? I mean, I think it's a bit off-putting, but it's not like we didn't have a little bit of warning, so... You look great. You, you look great. Anyway, good night. <laughs> um, and <laughs> look here, we'll move the book to... Like, block any eye contact and just be <laughs> reading <I'm> intensifies. <laughs> I'm going to be, like, looking looking down at myself again, like, taking in my appearance. And one of the things that Jack and 
Lakir would have read in that book is that I can, you know, change form. Actually, I probably would have already known that, you know, just that's a pretty basic thing that hags can change form. And so I'm going to attempt to change back into like my regular litzy look. How naturally does that come to me? Roll me a d20. A three. <laughs> oh, you know what? You know what? I'm going to use my luck, my regular luck, not my birthday luck, because I've got got three of those. I mean, technically, you do have birthday luck on top of that, so you can roll with advantage every roll to this session. Oh, oh, but I have to first take the luck. Oh, you're right, you're right. So I'm not, I'm not, I haven't drank the luck. It's for the whole day, though, by the way. Okay, okay, that is good to know, but I I have not used my luck potion, so I'm just going to use my regular luck. Fourteen. I mean, a fourteen, you easily transform as a hag would into your humanoid self it seems to come harder at first with i mean a three check at the beginning but after a while are able to kind of conjure um you know you take out a tail of a newt and you know a a crow's beak and stuff and you throw it on the ground and then you turn into into little gnomish litzy and then you're able to go back to sleep okay yep i fall back asleep Okay, hey, uh, look here. Uh, you are just about to finish your book of your father's. Let me tell you what has gone on. Okay. So you found out that Amalek is a child of the Shadowfell who obtained a body. Uh, you also found out Harold obtained the body of a gnome. But Amalek, Amalek obtained a body of a cursed shadow elf from the Shadowfell. With his new body being drawn towards the very plane he was once damned to, Amalek became obsessed with the Shadowfell and would hardly ever leave where his Shadowfell Fey people lived. And Amalek toiled longer and longer on the other side of the Vale between Shadows and Feywild before eventually, after three years of hard service with his fellow Shadow Fey, he became one of the top servants of the Raven Queen of Death. All while Amalek was only at the young age of ten. Under the command of the Raven Queen, Amalek became fascinated with the concept of immortality, so much so that Amalek would often reach out to the other spirits to gain their favor. One spirit took hold of Amalek's curiosity and polluted it into a dark spirit's guide's bidding. Amalek, soon through this corruption, grew envious of the power and immortal spirit the Raven Queen possessed. He aligned himself with other commanders of the Raven Queen's army, and Amalek staged a betrayal to steal the Raven Queen's heart to eat for himself and thereby gain her power and immortality as instructed by his dark spirit guide. Amalek and the other commanders were successful in killing the Raven Queen and obtained her heart for Amalek. But upon eating the Raven Queen's heart, the Raven Queen's recently killed soul lashed out and forced her remaining shadow magic into Amalek, which laid a curse upon him. This curse banished Amalek from the Shadow Realm to the Material Plane, and it stripped him of his Shadow Fey heritage, which once tethered him to the Shadow Fell, and made him a High Elf that is now native to the Material Plane, devoid of any of his Shadow Magic. The Raven Queen's curse also inverted the effects of immortality on Amalek to make it so his lifespan would now equate to the lifespan of a normal human. The Raven Queen's body was broken up into necrotic fibers that molded into magic items and scattered across the plains one of which a hag named Raven found in the Feywild and used its power to dominate the giants. Amalek, after killing the Raven Queen, is now the rightful ruler of the Shadowfell, but is banished from its land and unable to get back. He came to visit Mama Sherry many times to try and get back through the portal from the Feywild to the Shadowfell, but for whatever reason is unable to get back through the portal to claim his throne. His friend Harold holds great power over him because Harold is used to his mortal body and has more practice with magic, which made Amalek bitter towards his once great friend. Amalek stays in balance of his new land because of the checks and balances that Harold provides. You also, in the back of one of the books, find blueprints for something called a combustible atomic transporter, and uh, you see some sketchings of a dark prophecy that is like cognizant of what Amalek's plan is to do with Great Grimbopolis, but it's not specific enough for you to make out. All right. As I finish my reading, I will close the book and start on the third, just because Luke here is nitpicky and wouldn't, in case Jack missed something. You um, notice that Jack mispronounced one of the words. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I knew he wasn't trustworthy. Um, <laughs> we kill him tonight. <laughs> 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 take out my rapier. No. How dare you. But um, I will 
go and kind of go over to Mama Sherry. Is she awake in any way, shape, or form? I mean, you can jostle her awake, okay. but... Which I will do. Like, here would have no issue with it. And... Hello? What? This... This person... Do you think he did what he did because he had to? It was in his nature and he didn't have a choice? Amalek? Yeah, no. Uh, and she kind of rubs her eyes a little bit. He he was really nice. And I mean, at one time, one of my favorite of my children. But the one day that he went into the Shadowfell and made this deal with whatever demon convinced him to he changed and since then i i haven't seen a smile from amalek i haven't seen any sort of humanity from him he's just he's changed he's different he's i hate to say it like this from one of my own children but he's evil well i i think that was fairly straightforward but thank you for the insight nonetheless sleep well and he'll leave it at that Eventually, he will finish clearing out the area he's sitting in with precious digitation and go to sleep. Yeah. And uh, with that, another watch happens. The artist formerly known as Giant will gladly take over, seeing that he has kind of already slept a bunch. I mean, it's kind of easy to rest for him when, you know, his servants are feeding him grapes and such. And so he kind of just gets up and he's like, yeah, okay. And then after your guys' full rest, you are fully rested. Yui... Jimmy Three Quarters Nelson is going to receive a message from his father, his father Nelson Nelson, that says, Hi, my boy, I'm very sick. My voice is not what it used to be. I think this is my last day. Come see your old pup. I'd love to see your face again. And you hear, you overhear the message as you're getting up and getting ready for the day. And Ricky looks over at you and says, My, my, my dad's in trouble. I need to go. Um, kind of need a party. Would you and your father come with me? Make sure I don't get in any trouble? I I did say I'd go with you. Um, let me... Let me go tell my friends. Okay, um... I mean, we'll leave in, you know, let's say 30 minutes, and he sets his sun his sundial watch <laughs> to 30 minutes from now. Indoors. <laughs> 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 so I'll kind of like run over to the group. Um, while I was fighting the, uh, the 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 lambs of slaughter, I told I told Ricky that I would take him to see his dad because we we met him, and apparently it's very urgent because his dad is very sick. So I need to go fill that promise, and I know you guys are very busy, so I'd understand if you can't make it. You eat well, I really want to. We're on a bit of a priority schedule, and personally, a giant seeing his father for the last time is not on my agenda. If you can convince the rest of the group to come with you, I'll accompany, but... No, you guys have a lot of stuff going on. Um, I bet that we can catch back up real quick here. I'll take him to go see his dad, and then I'm going to try to get my dad a body back. And then I'll find you guys real fast. All right. It'll be quick. The frown, for real. Like, (laughs) Jack doesn't normally, like, express those kinds of emotion. You know, he doesn't frown ever. I don't know if I've ever explicitly stated. He's kind of always got, like, a little bit of at least a smirk or something, you know. A little upturn at the ends of the mouth. But he is struggling with this. More than he expected to, I think. Uh, Because even though he hasn't known any of these kids for a very long time, like him and Yui, like he's known Yui the longest, not by much. It was like a couple hours longer than everybody else. But, uh, you know, they are very similar. And so... uh, But he'll look at Yui and say, Hey... You go do what you gotta do. Because sometimes that's the way it is, you know? And I think that it'll be okay. You've proven yourself capable. And I'm glad that you found your dad. 
that I did not think that we would. I honestly, I am surprised, especially, especially given his current state of existence that he's in. But uh, you, you keep them safe. Go, go help Ricky say goodbye to his dad for the last time, and I hope that you find your dad a body, and I hope that I'll see you again. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for helping save me when I was in trouble a few times. Of course. And I'm glad that you'll be staying with these guys, because I found my dad, and they still need one. (laughs) And then I'll, like, skip off. (laughs) And Jack starts crying. Like, not, uh, like, a lot, but, you know, he's not, like, weeping or anything. But there are tears Mm -hmm. coming from the corners of his eyes, you know, rolling down his cheeks, and he turns away and she kind of takes a few steps back and so exits Yui um yeah and with that uh you guys hear a commotion coming from the next room you assume it to be uh in in the dressing room that you put Tess's mouse body in uh you hear a commotion of hey hey guys yeah what it what it do man <laughs> I'm feeling surprisingly a lot better now. I I think it's safe to let me out. I'm going to take a second to even register like where where things are coming from, you know, like like where the voice is coming from and who it is and everything. So, uh, he's in the other room mm-hmm. and we're hearing it from the other room. Yeah, you guys placed him in the changing room last session with right, the right. evil symbol on it. Uh, I'm going to perk up and say it it's Tess. I think he's okay now, and I'm gonna run to the door, but then like just peek it open a little bit and try to stick my head in and see how he's doing. You see, no longer gray, no longer covered in these purple veins, a young Tess who uh, is notably a little taller than he used to be, but I mean, blonde hair, green eyes, you know. Are you feeling okay? Is Litzy in hag form? No, I no, still she's look... In, she's I'm in gnome, gnome form. form. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm doing okay. I, I'm feeling more like me than I have in a long time. I'm going to throw open the door violently <laughs> and then yell back to the other room. Guys, Tess, he's okay. And I'll, I'll run up and like hug Litzy and like greet everybody and be like, I don't know how you found me. Well... I don't necessarily think we were searching for you. You just were here when we came. In a not good state, either. You said you're feeling better. Yeah. It seems that some of the the anger that the goop was giving me is starting to fade. At least momentarily. That's a that's a good sign. I I think that I think that it's the first recovery we've seen from the goop in ever, right? I don't know if I'm recovered. While I do feel a lot more in control, I can still feel it. Right, well, we'll just have to keep a close eye on you then. Yeah. Welcome back. Thank you. Horan, hi. It's been a minute. Hey. <laughs> Both of you feel your arms burn as as the symbol has finally the symbol on both of your arms that the brother mark that you guys share is finally uh enacted again awesome i i lean in and i i give him one of those manly forearm handshakes yeah (laughs) it looks like we have another party member now i'm still crying (laughs) they all like look at you i'm like yeah hey Um kid this is our new friend. Um, his name is Jack. I'll water bend the tears away. <laughs> He'll laugh a little. <laughs> Just you know. I think you two will get along get along very well. Both of you do assume. <laughs> in his moment of pain just like are we pushing a new friendship on me right now? I'm not ready. <laughs> Torin, not to um nudge you along too rapidly but your father might be dying 
before we go, the, there's only one thing that I want to do. Okay. So Mama Sherry's still around, right? Yeah. Uh huh. But I have to go talk to Mama Sherry first, and then we can we can go uh, save my father. Okay. Quick <clears throat> interjection. While he's doing that, I want to grab two nukes. Two. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but we have the nukes where they were, right? Right. Uh huh. Okay. So um, I just want to take two collars. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. You successfully take two collars. You put them in your inventory. Um, but before you leave to talk to Mama Sherry, Katya says to you, your mom uh, says, I mean, um, I don't think I can go back. I don't think I'd be of any use. I might want to stay here, but I do have to warn you the prison warden, the warforged prison warden, he won't hesitate in killing you and he has a group of of zombified lackeys that he uses to dispatch of people who enter into his prison and it took everything I had to get out of there and I just I don't want you to be headstrong I don't know if you're headstrong like your father but it might be wise to try and sneak past these enemies because they will try and kill you and I just met you well, I guess we'll see when they get when we get there. But I don't think uh, there isn't, or I don't think this is this isn't anything that I can't handle. Well, I wish you the best, and I hope to reunite with you and your father once again. And I'm sorry that I can't help. And go go and talk to the hag. I'm sure she needs it. She seems something okay. Is is everything okay with her? Why is she tied up? Um. Yeah, she just uh, sleepwalks. So. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. Keeping her in the same place. Are you lying to your mother? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're entering into the thirteen-year-old rebellious phase of Torin. <laughs> yeah, and so she'll uh, she'll let you go over and talk to Mama Sherry as much as you'd like. Okay. Awesome. Uh, I go up to Mama Sherry, and I say, "Do you have, uh, or is there any reason that you would be?" dishonest with any of us hags are very dishonest but I don't think I have reason to be dishonest with you I'm gonna die today so <laughs> okay good <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> I say okay and I'm gonna reach into my bag I'm gonna kind of not fully pull out but kind of just show my uh, bottle of purple goop oh yeah and I'm just gonna say do you know anything about this? Oh, no. My sister Raven knows everything about that. She... She supplies very many people with that exact goop for nefarious reasons. Um, I think it would be wise to ask her. I don't know what she uses it for, but I do know that it helps her gain more power. It seems very chaotic okay and she said she thinks she's gonna die oh because she's gonna get gonna get burned, burned. at the stake that's right yeah. okay cool fantastic um <laughs> wonderful <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna grab before we leave i'm gonna grab one of those collars too yeah okay. just, and then just so i can look into it more later and then but then we can head over and go to the ice castle yeah wonderful um are you guys going to the the fortress or are you guys going to the ice castle oh two di- those are separate yes okay. the fortress is the prison the ice castle um is like the the central hub of uh, the winter court i guess it's not central because it's very much to the north but yeah uh you guys would suspect that raven is at the castle whereas Torin's parents are in the fortress or parent dad how many nukes were there two two mm-hmm. how big are they uh, like, could I pick them up? You could pick them up. They're they're very. They have a lot of the things working inside of them, but they are without whatever component Yui has in his brain. Mm-hmm. They are a little hollow and not very useful. Yeah, functionally useless. Correct. Yes, functionally useless. Okay. Um, I think that while like Tess is, you know, talking to his party and like Torin's doing his thing. Yeah. Jack. You know, emotionally distraught, but he's going to step away 
and then because uh, we're not are we in the same room as the nukes or are they in the yeah. other they are in the room next to they're, us uh, I mean they're in the same room that you guys are okay. currently like in the laboratory while all this is going on I think Jack will walk over to the nukes assuming that they're easily accessible yeah, and I'll uh, pick them up okay and then he'll vanish and uh, the ring that he normally wears will drop to the floor okay and this is a feature I haven't used yet. Right. Um, called Bottled Respite. Right. So my ring is the equivalent of a genie's lamp. Like, right. it's got a compartment in it. But it's a space that I can enter for up to six hours currently. I can take items in with me. I can leave them there. And so this will be just a quick flash, basically. And then Jack will be back, ring back on his finger. But I'll pick up the nukes, disappear, ring falls to the floor, and then I'll reappear without the nukes. Okay. And they'll be in my interdimensional space. Right. Okay. Wonderful. Nice. And, you know, I don't draw any attention to it. If somebody notices, they notice, but he's, yeah. like, just going to do it Yeah. and continue on. He's a little... Uh, he's struggling, man. Yeah. No, I totally <laughs> understand. So, yeah, you are able to uh, hold these in your ring. Uh, let's see... Being in your hag form, is there anything, is there, like, are you talking to the party about it? Like, what what are you doing with that? Knowing the status that hags have had thus far, no. <laughs> I'm not saying anything about it. Unless somebody says something to me, I'm just going to play it cool for now. Okay, sounds great. Oh, oh, I would like to um, just step outside before everyone else and try my freaking broom that I finished last yes. night. Yes, okay, yeah. So you are able to get on your broom. This is a broom of flying, and you are able to fly with it with ease. So I try to just, like, slip out casually without people noticing, try out my broom for a second, and you say it comes pretty naturally, stoked about that. But before I head back inside just to catch up with everyone else, I'm going to stick it in my bag of holding where it's been just yeah. to, again, just be a little on the down low on the witchy side. Yeah. So uh, you can f- you can fly up to 40 feet per round with this uh, with up to 200 pounds on it. You can fly up to 30 feet per round with up to 400 pounds on it, which is its carrying capacity. So you are definitely under the weight requirements for that, uh, but you're able to quickly uh, Nimbus 2000 around <laughs> the uh, the courtyard of the Brawl Mall and then you are able to come back inside and sew it away. And then uh, Katya is rubbing her hands together uh, eager to go and then she gestures to the door and says I await your return. I'm excited to see you all back alive and thank you for helping me. Are we going to the same place that the artist, the artist formerly known as, and Mama Sherry are going. Are we all going to the same place? Are we like a big squad? Mama Sherry and the artist formerly known as Giant are going to the Ice Castle, whereas uh, the Frozen Fortress is just like it's right next to it. Like they're so technically, it's like a oh, see you later, and then you guys walk together for like two hours type deal. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Continues walking the same direction. Mm. Uh, <laughs> about how long is the travel to the fortress? It's about an hour or two, like between okay. an hour and two hours. I would say just before we, like three quarters of the way there, um, I want to just cast Mage Armor. Um, Wonderful. Just to yeah, be prepared. I'm, I was going to say, I was going to prepare on my way. I was, I was going to do Mage Armor and then Bastion of Law and then also sacrifice some first level spell slots to regain my sorcery points. Okay, wonderful. Yes, you are able to do all of that. And you all uh, are walking for a while. <laughs> Along the way, Jack will be talking to the artist formerly known as Giant about Mama Sherry. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and I'll say, hey, I know that you guys are doing what you think is best. Yeah? Like, well, um, you I think mean, she's bad? I don't necessarily know whether she's bad or not, but Adelina told us to, and Adelina's never steered us wrong before. I get that. That makes sense, you know? She sounds like somebody to trust. I've never met her. Everyone else here seems to think that she's all right, though. Yeah. But I think Mama Sherry's trying to do what she thinks is best. It seemed like she cared about those children. I don't think that she was the bad guy in the situation. She might be evil, but just because they're a bad guy, 
doesn't mean they're a bad guy. <laughs> Thank you for laughing. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'd like to think that too. Here's the deal. I like you. I trust you. Hey. Tom the Bomb, you are the man. And, well, I think that I can hold off on going in to this talking to Adelina before you come with me. I'd love it if you came with me. Talk to her yourself. And that'd be totally rad. She'd probably tell you all the reasons why she's doing what she's doing. But I understand that you guys have got to go save a dragonborn. And that's, that's priority number one. We giants love dragonborns. Tight. So, thank you. I can hold off. Of course, of course. Thank you. That means a lot. You have no idea. I owe you one. Hey, Tom the Bum. Maybe someday we'll fight in the rink, but until that day. I would love to. (laughs) I'll take you on. His his rippling biceps. (laughs) Flex his pecs at me, and I'll try to do the same, but I can't because I'm probably, you know, not super muscular. I'm like 150 pounds. My pecs, nah. (laughs) <laughs> They're not so, there. <laughs> um, the artist formerly known as Giant will set up camp right outside of Bless. the uh, the castle and wait for you guys to go through this fortress. What an absolute champ. Yes. Well, I mean, had he not have liked uh, Tom the Bomb so much, I don't think that that would have happened. But I, yeah. So <laughs> well, we got some pull. <laughs> yeah, we got some pull. I will also be asking the Giants along the way. So the fortress and the castle... Are they allied? Adelina usually stores all of her prisoners in the fortress. So, yeah. I mean, Adelina's been using our fortress to store up her people that she thinks are bad. And you're just fine with letting us walk in and attempt to spring one of its prisoners? Well, had you not been joined by my man here, Tom the Bomb... I probably would have something different to say about it, but I trust your judgment. It does seem a little odd that she would lock up Dragonborn if she is. And which point I'm going to direct to, Torin. Yes, um, Adelina does seem to be a bit in the middle right now. Do you trust her? I'm feeling indifferent. Uh, I feel like... I thought she was more trustworthy. I feel like one way or the other, we're about to find out just how trustworthy she is. So Tess will probably direct this mostly at the artist. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people are very trustworthy in some ways. Like, I used to trust my mom a lot, but then sometimes they have motivations that can make them do bad things. Um, I wish you guys luck. Uh, I'll just be over here. So, have fun in there. And, uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't really believe this hag that she's actually holding a dragonborn captive or the, the other dragonborn. I mean, my mind's kind of boggled right now because Adelina's great. Uh, dragonborn are great. So why would she be holding dragonborn? I'm going to have to sit here and think for a while. Uh, you guys go have fun in there. We'll do our best to have fun. And watch out for that warden. I hear he's scary. I'll take him on. Headstrong. I'll take on anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys see this this giant icy blue fortress with a uh, very like close together gate like uh, icicle poles that are adorning the outside. It's very strong, and you see outside. Uh, a Christmas present that looks a little belated. What does it mean to look a little belated? Yeah. <laughs> Meaning that last episode was our holiday episode and this episode is I not see. A <laughs> <laughs> I see. Okay. I see. It's a belated gift. I get it. I get it. And it's right outside the very front door. And uh, would any of you like to inspect this Christmas present? I will. Unless anyone else wants to do something, I am going to. I don't trust this, and I'm going to cast Mage Hand and have everyone back up like 20-ish feet and then attempt to unwrap it or something, whatever I need to do, or pick it up. How big is it? It is about uh, six six inches, uh, like a six-inch cube. Okay. 
like six, so six a inches. Gift. A yeah, small smaller gift. gift. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you open up this gift with Mage Hand Lakir, um, and as you're opening it up with uh, Mage Hand, you notice a little tag that says to Lakir, and uh, you open it, and <sighs> over you uh, comes this feeling of chaos. And for the day, you have been gifted wild magic. And inside of this wild magic box, you see another gift that says to Litzy. Mm. Look here seems like the last person yeah. who wants wild magic. <laughs> oh, I was hoping he was going to open it. <laughs> awesome. Before we found out what it was. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, I feel weird. It's not right and you'll see him just kind of start pacing um I, there's something there for someone else and yeah Uncomfy. you'll see him just yeah it, very uncomfortable throughout the entire scenario Litzy, you see a box that says to Litzy. it is the exact same size as the box that Lakir opened unafraid i tear open the box wonderful um and it's it's in a birthday wrap instead because you know your parents don't want to give you birth uh, christmas wrap for your birthday because obviously that would seem like you're pairing together the op yeah the holiday so but you also feel this surge of wild magic in you and then you see a note on the next present that says to jack oh i'm all about it oh yeah you open it a oh, yeah. surge of wild magic wow, wow. Shocking. <laughs> a pattern. and then you see another box that says to tess well, I'll open it. Wonderful. And then you see another package that is... <laughs> like, <laughs> but wait. It says to Torin. But what did Tess get? Wild magic. Oh my God. <laughs> I just wanted to check. Yeah, I saw that coming. Um, yeah, guess I'll open it. And then all five of you have been imbued with this wild magic. Torin, you no longer feel like this wild magic has been uh, sucked from your body, and you don't feel like the need to eat these candies in order to cast your wild magic. So anytime this day that you guys cast a cantrip or a spell, Yikes. you guys will have a wild magic effect. Absolute chaos. Absolute is chaos. About Can I, am I allowed chaos to Christmas. ask if this is going off of your same wild magic? wild magic table the exact same wild magic oh, table mm-hmm. so d20 and then a d100 that's gonna be a lot of wild oh magic yeah rules. i'm ready for what it. do we do for the party of spellcasters we give them all wild, all wild magic, magic. Yeah. let's go <laughs> are you guys entering into this fortress it seems to have this gate gate that is freely open why is the gate open <laughs> You can assume maybe a dragonborn who was trying to run away very quickly from the prison hastily forgot to close the gate before she left. Look at it. Look at the group. I think security's a little lax here. It could be a trap to lure us into a false sense of security. You know, you might be right. That, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And these gifts, mm-hmm. you might be onto something. There. Yes, I, I it's, don't... It's almost like they knew we were coming. Well, mm. we were traveling with one of their allies Fair. for the entire way here. It's not unreasonable to assume that there was eyes on us of some kind. <sighs> well, okay. before we go through, I'm going to cast resistance on Jack. Wow. Which will give you a, a d4 to add to a saving throw. And then yeah. I will, like, lightly nudge you. How long does it last? A minute, right? Yep. Kay. One minute. Okay. Okay, awesome. So you guys enter into this frosty fortress and you see this entry room with these two double doors and I need each of you to roll perception as you open them. Okay. Nine. Twelve. Thirteen. Twelve. Eleven. We did not was do the great. the highest 13? Highest was 13. My wow, passive was perception that? is 15. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so Torin, as you enter into this room... You realize that there are two doors. One of them kind of seems trapped and maybe rigged to set off an alarm that would alert everyone to your presence in the prison. But with a roll of, <laughs> but with a roll of 13, you have no idea which one is which. Okay. And you see a ventilation system that a tiny creature may be able to go into but nothing nothing larger than a tiny creature is um resistance a spell resistance oh, is resistance a is spell a hey roll me a d20 oh, test oh, no. <laughs> and a d100 
No. It was a nat one and then 80. Beautiful. Tess, as you cast resistance, you immediately take five points of psychic damage. Oof. Ow. Yeah, that's not as bad as it could be. Rough. No, no. Uh, you know. No, but that's not... <laughs> That's not a great start to our relationship. No, Casting it is a spell not. on me and then hurting yourself in the brain. So you guys are in this entry room. There are two doorways. To the west of you, you see a room with uh, some type of shrine on it. What are you guys up to? So we have the room with the shrine. We have two doors that may or may not be trapped and, yep. a, and a ventilation shaft. Yes, that yeah. seems to hold up to a tiny creature. Perfect. What's this shrine? Oh, like, I'm going to walk up to the shrine for yeah. sure and see, like, what it's a shrine to. Uh, it's very demonic looking. Uh, under uh, Underneath this, sh- uh, there's this, like, light uh, square where it looks like something was removed. And underneath this light square, the name Amalek is written and crossed mm. out. And then underneath the name Amalek, the name Raven is etched into the wall. And... That's what you notice. I'll be focusing on the door and call back. If there are any symbols of a god or demon or something like that, grab them with me for grab them for me, will you? Um, y- you might be interested in this statue. All right, one moment. Um, I will have detected cast detect magic, um, just to see if the doors were magically trapped, and if so, if that would reveal which one. You see red wires coming from each of the doors. They do not seem magically tra- trapped. They seem mechanically trapped. Okay. Would I know that before casting uh, Detect Magic? Yes, I'll allow you to take back Detect Magic unless you want the Wild Magic roll. Actually, I will cast Detect Magic just because yeah. even with the wires, like I'd move. be seeing if there was something more mm-hmm. beyond it. Yeah. So uh, I will. Roll me a d20 and a d100. Three. 44. 44. <laughs> Things are not going well. That's two on the bad table. Uh, 44. Uh, I need everyone except for Lakir to make me a wisdom saving throw. And uh, Lakir, what is your spell save DC? 15. Okay. Can I use luck? You can use luck. 11. 13. 14. Uh, 14. 19. Okay, Tess, you look at Lakir and nothing's changed. Everyone else Um. is frightened by Lakir. Uh, you have disadvantage on attacks and saving throws while Lakir is in your line of sight. Huh. And cannot willingly move towards Lakir. He looks to be <coughs> demonic. He looks very, uh, very much like Tess when Tess was under the effects of the purple goop. Do they get a further saving throw or is that just how it is forever? For a minute. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'll turn back to the group and um, Tess will hear me say, um, the doors aren't magically trapped by any means, but at least we know that they're trapped. Um, the rest of the group will say, now that I've gathered you here, I'm ready to destroy you all. <laughs> As I start transforming. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jack will turn around from the shrine and just, ah! <laughs> Look here! <laughs> What's going on, man? I'll start wandering over to the shrine because that's where they told me I may have interest. And I'll see. My father was here. He was this place his? Um, Tess will hear me say. Everyone else will hear me say, this was my father's and I've come to reclaim it. (laughs) (laughs) Jack will be on the ceiling now, upside down. (laughs) He'll just walk straight up the wall onto the ceiling, and he's just mm-mm, none of it, having none of it. Lakir will not notice anyone's reactions to all of this, and so just be focusing on the shrine. Tess is gonna be like trying to like herd them, yeah, <laughs> like chasing after, like, oh, what, what, what's happening? Are you okay? Are you okay? Oh, oh wait, Tor, it Oh no. <laughs> um, I will be like moving to the farthest edge of the room and just like scooting along the wall just locked eyes on look here. Yeah, I was gonna say the same in the way that I, I like totally can't take my eyes off of look here. I just like fall to the ground and I'm gonna take the liberty to say that the hag side of me is like 
I'm still super scared, but also like super enthralled, like just like totally just locked in just on like this. Dem- <laughs> <laughs> they can't. They are so afraid I started of you. Blasting. <laughs> oh yeah, you have disadvantage against. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I'm on the ceiling. I'm just like, no, don't touch. You're too scary. But after a minute, uh, the effect seems to subside, um, and you guys are still sitting in next to this door unable to tell which door is the one that it has an alarm system rigged to it uh, i'm not necessarily a master of mechanics um what do you, each of you think without even thinking about it jack's gonna summon a rapier with my my packed weapon right. and he's just gonna cut the wires on both doors roll me a sleight of hand dc 15 Oh, no. oh, I thought that was another natural one. No, it's a seven. Seven. I'm gonna use my inspiration. I, I would I would suggest that. I rolled the exact same thing. Oh no! That's a ten total. A ten. Uh, out from the ceiling of the prison, you hear. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter at this point, and I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> open one of the doors. If it's I'll not open blocked. the other one. <laughs> I'm look. Like full sprint, like whatever's behind that door, I'm just like running as fast as I can. Yes. So you guys enter into these doors. You see uh, a hallway uh, leading to the left, and to uh, straight in front of you another door. So they just go to the same place. These doors both went to the same place. Okay. One of them was just trapped. I expect we'll have company soon, so we should probably get to a defensible position. I flip my skeleton coin. Yeah, and out a bunch of skeletons pop, and they start singing the YMCA today. And uh, as they say, young man, for the last time, uh, you feel inspiration come onto you, and you are now inspired bardically. Sweet. So are you guys attempting to go into this door or down this hallway that does not have a door? Well, apparently I sprinted down the hallway, and then seeing that this led to nothing, I'm going to just sprint right back to there. <laughs> is there is the other door locked? You can try it. Yeah, look here would probably try the door. Yeah, it is unlocked. Okay, I'll peer in. Does there appear to be anything inside? There are three prison cells that you can see, and inside there is a prisoner of one of these cells. What's your father's name? Cord. Cord? Okay. Oh, uh, Cord? Not yet, and I'll close the door. <laughs> okay. you'll, you'll hear weekly. Hello? I bust through the door. I'm going to usher everybody like into this, yeah. through this doorway. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say everybody get in. Mm-hmm. Once we're all inside, are these walls made of stone? You know, uh, so they're made of like a stony material that has like ice in a bunch of the cracks of the wall. It's almost very artistic. It's kind of like a cobblestone, but each of the cracks are held together by ice. Fourth level transmutation. Okay. Stone shape. Wonderful. I am going to pull the stone over this door so that there is no longer a way in or out yeah. of this so, room yeah. because I do not want people busting in here with this alarm going off. Okay, uh, roll I'm me. I'm going to make us a safe space. And roll me a wild magic check. <laughs> That'll be a nine, nine. on the D20. Okay, that's not that's, as bad. That's the middle table. That's the table. best roll we've had so far. <laughs> oh, that was so close. 35. Okay, that was right next to the 100. Uh, okay. Small birds flutter and chirp in your vicinity for one minute, during which time you automatically fail any stealth check and are targeted by all enemies within 30 feet of you. <laughs> They can't get in. They can't get in. But they hear chirp, chirp. And they're climbing on the other side of this wall. You're trying to make a safe space. And you actually make, you know, like Disney princess vibes. I just, I run to the opposite, like the end of the corridor. Which is where you'll see Lakir aiming at like the the area in case they get through, um, preparing to cast some sort of spell. So Tess during this time is going to cast Goodberry and run around very like hastily to every person like, Here's two good berries just in case someone goes down or you get hungry. He, he, here's two good berries. <laughs> Torin, last time he had good berries, he had everyone's good berries. Yeah. As Tess hands me this, yeah, I'll so say, everybody gets two good berries. I've missed you, and I'll eat the good berries. Oh, oh, oh. And touching. Oh. So you guys are locked in this room, uh, and in one of the cells, you see a small gnomish man. 
See, I told you this wasn't the place. Upon further inspection, you see Litzy's father, Harold, and he's shackled to the wall and he says, Litzy, Litzy, hi, uh, you've come for me. Hi, um, it's been a long time. I'm going to run up to him and kneel down next to him and say, Is it really you? You found your way to the Feywilds? Just kept walking, like you guys said. And here I am. How long have you been here for? Oh, um... Well, I know that the Feywild time works different. You notice that he's considerably aged. He came to find Raven, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Were you able to find Raven? Yeah. And she's stronger than I thought. Let's see, you have to do what she says. Let's see, you have to help her. She's going to kill you if you don't help her. Let's see, she's going to kill all of us if you don't help her. I'm going to like hush him while he's saying that because I don't know if anybody else is hearing that. Um, but I don't want anybody else to hear that. So I'm just going to, shh, shh. We, we'll figure this out. We'll figure this out. Um, and then I'm going to take out my thieves tools and attempt to pick the shackles. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tess, roll me a wild magic table. You casted good berry, I just realized. Ah, uh, yes, yes. 69. Nice. nice. <laughs> but Best result two. possible. <laughs> but a two? Oh, man. Um, that should be the similarly. best result no matter what. Just to add to the work that you have to do, um, as all this is going on, I'm going to try to pull a wand from my wand bag, which I rolled a nine. Tess, you will heal four points of damage immediately as you cast Goodberry. Nice. And Litzy, while I'm pulling up Lakir's wand, can you go ahead and remind me what you got on your thieves tools to unlock your father? Thirteen. Yeah. With a thirteen, you just barely are able to unlock these shackles and your dad rubs his wrists and he gives you a big hug. I don't hug him back. <laughs> That's fine. He's happy to see you no matter what, and he's like, I thought I'd never see you. Um, c- can you walk? Y- yeah, I can walk. Okay, well, um, you probably are going to be have to be walking um, fairly quickly. I'm not sure exactly what's going to be going on down here in a second, but clearly, as you can hear, uh, we set off some alarms. You're capable, right? Uh, of fighting? <laughs> As long as it's not... I throw him my long sword. Oh, he'll catch Make it yourself in one useful. hand. And he's like, you've changed. I like you now. Don't, don't respond. But <laughs> <laughs> And a- as you throw the long sword, you pull out... Uh, do you cast identify on this item? On this wand? Oh, yes. I would pull it out and cast identify as per my usual. Okay. Yes. Uh, you, pull, you find a wand of fireball. Go ahead and roll me a wild magic check. 13. 73. 37. You're right. I just read them in the, <laughs> in the way that they were there. Yeah. For the next minute, Lakir, you have double vision. This gives you disadvantage on ranged attacks, including spell attacks and perception checks involving sight. Okay. If I cast a spell that has a save instead. Yeah, then it wouldn't. It's, it's spell fine. attacks. Okay. Uh-huh. Spell attacks. Cool. So Litzy's father, Harold, is unshackled. He's like, okay, you guys know, have you heard about the warden here? Quite. He's supposed to be pretty formidable from what we've heard. Uh, You met him. You remember Q? Ah, I do. Raven took him from me, and now, well, he's really strong. He's much stronger than when I had him, and he doesn't just heal anymore. He's the one who put me here, so uh, let's go fight him, I guess. And who was Q? Q62, the heal bot that you guys took from Great Crumbopolis. Okay, that's right. How well do you know this fortress? (laughs) I know this cell and the entry way. That's as far as you got. I wasn't. I went to the castle. I was put here as a prisoner. All right then. I feel so bad. We hate your dad so much. I hate your dad so much. And, like, and he's just like, you guys came to rescue me. It's like, ah. Uh. Oh, well, you guys are locked in. Uh, this room. You hear footsteps coming down the hallway. Litzy's father uh, is brandishing this weapon that Lakir has given him and you are all still imbued with this wild magic energy, but I think that's where we're going to end our session for the night. My name is Cade and I'm the host and dungeon master of this Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition adventure and I'm joined here by the players to my left. Mason playing Lakir. Brooklyn playing Litzy. Jameson playing Jack. Danny playing Tess. Caden playing Torin. Awesome. Um, well, thank you so much for listening. And hey, happy birthday again to Brooklyn. Brooklyn uh, and I. Yeah, happy birthday to um, our host and dungeon master, Cade. 
aka my husband we have the same birthday we have the same birthday <laughs> and hey you know what i want for my birthday this year for you to go on, go on over to patreon.com forward slash knocked and uh support our patreon and shameless self-promotion shameless, self-promotion. <laughs> shameless. And his I- birthday give him a break yeah, and, and we've got a double birthday in the house. You bet I want you to go on to our Patreon. So oh, yeah. go visit it. Just check it out. Share it with a friend. Patreon.com forward slash knocked. That's knocked K N O C K E D. We hope that you remember when life knocks you flat on your back. All you got to do is keep rolling, and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.